got to New York City, I, of course, called up a good friend of mine who uh, resides at the Dakota Hotel here in town. Please welcome John Lennon. How's everyone doing? The John Lennon. Wow. Doing great. You. Hello, John. I will sit when invited to. Oh, but I didn't realize that was a custom with you. I'm, I'm like a vampire when it comes to sitting. I must be... Well You're like a vampire is to entering... Exactly right. As you are to sitting. Exactly right. Okay. Well, uh, I invite you to sit, oh, please. thank you very much. Wow. Mr. Lennon, it's so great to see you. You too. It is great to see all of you out there. Right. You're wearing the traditional mop-top haircut. That's right. I've gone back in time, in a way. I went to my bar, and I said, take me back. <laughs> take me back to when we were young. Because I, we've never talked about this on the show, but every single other time that you visited, you've had a flat top. <laughs> That's right. You know, my long hair just moosed up <laughs> and clipped off the top. You'd always give, you'd always even it off for me, right? Yeah, I would always do that for you. You know, you cut always... his hair. Oh yeah, of course. That's you know, I mean, who wouldn't want to cut the hair of a beetle? Well, wow. I know one person. <laughs> Who's that? Ringo. <laughs> your best friend Ringo. Yeah, he won't cut my hair anymore. He won't cut your hair anymore, but no. so he used to. He's no, he won't cut it at all. I come over, you know, I'm already wearing the smock. I'll walk in, and, he say, and I say, all right, let's just, you know, right at the shoulders like we usually do. He says, I can't do that anymore. It weirds my family out. I have to explain to my family why I'm cutting my best friend's hair and why this, you know, millionaire is coming to my house for a free haircut. So you still have money. I would think that you wouldn't be able to get credit quite card. quite a bit of it, sure. Yeah, I Living in the Dakota is not cheap. So, uh, uh, did he say peace and love after that, or? He, yeah, well, he does it every once in a while. He was in a, such a bad mood. Really? He, what, he was a little grouchy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, can so imagine. Do it. So, for those uh, of you who don't know, uh, John Lennon, of course, uh, is the famous Beatle. Uh, do you want to go into that a little bit, or? Sure, I played in the rock band The Beatles. Uh, I was one of the guitarists. You know, we had two. Well, no, we actually had three if you count the bass guitar, but not many people do. They count that as his own instrument, the bass. Mm -hmm. And then we had, what else did we have in the thing? Oh, we had a, well, you know. <laughs> we had an instrument that I could only describe as uh, transcendent. <laughs> Your favorite instrument. My favorite instrument, my favorite word, transcendent. <laughs> and it would be always in the, be in the back of us. In the back. Behind us, you know, we would be all lined up in the front. The guitar's over here, the bass maybe over. Or maybe we'd switch it right. It would always be confusing which was going. But I always knew in the back. <laughs> there was an apparatus back there manned by one of, one of music's greatest gods. <laughs> my best friend, even though we're having a tough time right now with my head. <laughs> Ringo, my best friend, would be back there drumming. Oh. He would play the... A percussion set that would keep <laughs> right. right behind us. Yes. Right. A set of individual instruments, toms and snares. The bass, snares, cymbals. Let's not forget about those. That's what right. are you talking about? I can't picture it. Combined, I guess there's only to one word. a kit. <laughs> a hit kit. We would call it a hit kit because, you know, you hit it with a stick. A couple, usually. Mm. As many sticks as one has arms. That's right. It, if it's the Def Leppard drummer, one stick. <laughs> it's easy math. It's easy math. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what one plus one equals. Do you, Mr. Lennon? Yes. <laughs> and I don't need to brag and prove myself here that I know what it is. I, I know what it bragging. is. I wasn't bragging. I'm not sure that he does know. <laughs> sure I do. One plus one. It's the easiest uh, equation of them all. So, so we can move on, you know, and talk about whatever else you want. Anything. So it's, it's as easy as looking down at one's arms and going, one, two, okay, I'll pick up two sticks. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then just go back there and hit away. And they're not just any sticks, by the way. These aren't just like twigs. No, these are percussion the sticks. Mm. If you don't have a percussion stick, 
you can't play the drums. There it is. I knew what you were going for the whole time. Well, it's your catchphrase. People like to hear you say it. That's true. Yeah. So now uh, I got into town. Oh, yes. Well, well, well thank you for coming. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to New York. <laughs> Do you try to do that to anyone who comes to New York? Anyone I see. You know, sometimes if I've got the afternoon free, I'll go into the, uh, you know, arrivals at the airport <laughs> and see if I can pick out who's returning home and who's new. How good are you at it? I'm <laughs> terrible, but it's, I just kind of swath everyone. Welcome to, to everyone. Don't you get swamped by fans? Some, yeah, well, that can be a problem, so I wear a disguise at times. Oh, really? What kind of disguise? Oh, mostly just a sheet over my body with two eye holes. <laughs> Around Halloween, nobody bothers me, but uh, any other month. Well, what are you doing, they'll say. I said, I'm ghost. getting ready. I'm a, I'm a ghost, or I'm getting ready for Halloween. Wow, getting ready for Or, it. you know, if it's November, I'll say, I haven't had time to change out of my costume. I'm busy, people. Busy schedule. <laughs> Very busy. Yeah. Super busy. So, uh, so you greet people at the airport. That's right. And then do any of them uh, say, hey, please take off that sheet, and then they recognize you? Oh, so, well, if anyone does, I say, okay, come here, and I'll put them underneath the sheet with me. Under the sheet? And say, you're meeting me, I'm John Lennon, I'll write you a song if you want, but other than that, I, I gotta go. <laughs> look, look at all these people. We'll share the eye hole, you know. Look at all these people going by. <laughs> They're gonna think New York City's a... Terrible place. <laughs> Why? Because they weren't properly greeted. <laughs> any other city you go to in the U.S., you know, you get a proper greeting from any rock legend that lives there. <laughs> as far as I know. So in uh, Texas, for instance, right. uh, you'd have Stevie Ray Vaughan, maybe. Sure. I have no idea if that's correct or You're factual. You're exactly correct. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, uh, by the way, you say you write them a song. You, it seems to me like you have not written any songs <laughs> since I've known you. You keep threatening to write songs. I you do. have it's these whistling threat songs. Uh, you know, well, you know why. I can't, I've, my best friend's got my guitar at his house, and he won't, he won't give it up. Yeah, he's Ringo working, has he's your He's working on an opera, he says. I said, what, 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 with a guitar, what are you doing? Working it's on what? An opera. An opera. So he says. He's working on an opera. That's Ringo what he Star. says. That's what he said to me. The singer of Octopus's Garden. Right. <laughs> Right. The limited range singer known as... I, you know, I think it's ridiculous, too. I mean, he should maybe stick to uh, what he does best, of course, which right. is, of the course... Drums. The drums, of course. It's too easy. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, the last time that I talked to you... Yes. ...on the seventh anniversary show... Right. Uh, ...we were talking on and on about uh, the person who assassinated you. Oh. And we got his name wrong, <laughs> which I thought was very... <laughs> Very odd that you would get his name wrong. You know, I don't even think I said his name. It was just flung at me, and I said, fine. I, you know, I, that's also something you don't really want to keep in your memory too much. Well, it was Mark David Chapman. That's right. What and did we say? We said John Hinckley. Oh, no, yeah, that's, way, that's wrong. Same. And we apologize for say, having such a screw-up. Same time period... 80, 81, 82, somewhere well, now around who there. who was John Hinckley? I believe he did Reagan, right? Oh, boy, if we're wrong on this... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I think he did. Mark, Mark David Chapman, you... He's the, he's the one who got me. He's the one who got you. He shot you in the back four times. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> and this is after you signed and autographed his copy of Double Fantasy. That's right. Well, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's all coming back. And didn't he... I, the one thing I do remember is I saw a guy coming up to me. He had a... Catcher in the Rye book poking out of the top of his shirt pocket. Sort of like it was his uh, iPhone in the movie Her. That's right. Mm. <laughs> and I thought for a minute, I thought that would be a good uh, something in a movie, but I had no time to really develop that. Sure. I got yeah. shot. Normally you would develop an idea like that. <laughs> right away. <laughs> right. I would go down to a screenwriter's office and say, I've got to tell you this. <laughs> something popping out of a shirt pocket. This could be a movie shot. Just a shot, not even give a movie. Shot. Yeah, screenwriters just need a shot at a time, you know. Sure, yeah. They call them scenes. Oh, well, yes. It's true. <laughs> so, now this guy approached you, but uh, mm. then did he pass you and then turn around and shoot you in the back? I'm trying to figure out well, exactly. Well, from what I'm told. Okay. Because, you know, yeah, he passed me by. Don't pass me by. Don't make... <laughs> 
don't know how much of the Beatles songs we can sing. That was outright. good. What was that? Like, that was a Beatles song called Don't Are you familiar with the Beatles songs, Don? No, I only get to listen to what you listen to. Yeah. Miley Cyrus says Hannah Montana. <laughs> there were some great hits on that. I know, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> like, for instance, the theme song? Yeah. And you put on that Miley wig you got at Claire's. <laughs> I have a friend who works at Claire's, and she... <laughs> She gave me 10% off on the wig. Wow. That's a great deal. Good deal. Now, wait a minute. Now, she didn't cut the wig off. It's not a little tiny monk's wig. No, Why she didn't cut it? 10% off the wig. But, okay. 10% off the price. I assumed you meant the price. Then why did you ask? <laughs> because I think, if I think maybe... Oh, I could be wrong. I'm sure there's 100 people in the audience who have the same inclination. I don't think so. I don't know. You never know. You do never know. So Chapman, he, he surprised you. He passed right. you by. He passed me by. I said, I had a good day to you. I've, ooh, look at that pocket. <laughs> he had no idea what he was talking about, what I was talking about. And then I, from what I hear, he turned around, spun thrice in the air. Like the Tasmanian devil or something? Right. Cool. Landed down on his knee and shot me with his, you know, the palm of his hand up. Like Spider-Man? Yeah. Like Spider-Man. Exactly. And he said, go, go, Spidey Bullet. <laughs> so he's mixing the Inspector Gadget catchphrase <laughs> with Spider-Man lore. When I heard it the first time, I was as confused as you are. It sounds like he's crazy. Well, I think he was. I, you know, I have, don't keep up with him. Who knows where he is? You never kept up with him after that? No. You didn't KIT? <laughs> What? He's in prison, you oh, know. Well, that makes sense. He, he's been... Sure. He's it's not a, dead yet? He, no, he's been denied parole eight times, as maybe you know. I uh, No, I don't. You don't know? You don't care? Yeah, that's the type of thing. Like I said, you want to keep it out of your mind. I'm trying to do other things with my life, like welcome <laughs> other people. Other things than get shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I see so many people doing that as a hobby. I said, why not me? Yeah. So instead, you're, uh, you came back... For those of you who don't know, you, you came back to life five right. years later. I came, four, four years later. I four, came, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, 1984, I leapt out of the ground. Was that in celebration of the Orwell book? No, it, not really, but I had heard the, the uh, title of that book. And I You'd th heard the title of yeah, it? Yeah, I never read it, but I said, oh, that sounds like a fine time to come out. <laughs> There's no logic to it when you come out of, from the ground from after being dead. You just eh, think of a year you heard of before you jump out. And you, hopefully it's a future one. <laughs> oh, yes, hell yeah. Are you allowed to go back into the past? Oh, you can do it, but I would recommend it because everyone would look at you and say, your clothing doesn't match, you're going right back into the ground. <laughs> jump out at a, a future date. If you go out into the past, well, that's right. people will murder you for your clothing. <laughs> exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. Now, what, you know, I mean, fashion changes so quickly now. Weren't you afraid that you would get murdered because your 1980 clothes didn't match 1984 clothes? No, because, you know, that white suit style always comes back. <laughs> yeah. You love the white suit with uh, no shoes. Well, that's right. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times people say, hey, you weren't the one on that album cover not wearing shoes. And I said, no, but I liked the, what Paul was doing, so I... I Appropriated it? That's right. Yeah. I, after that shoot, I said, I took off my shoes and said, you wear these. So he's wearing your shoes? For, yep. As far as, as... Probably, he's probably still wearing them. Wow. They were good shoes. Fantastic. Now, we all know, John, of course... Uh, it's sometimes it's hard to catch you here in New York because right. you're out there uh, touring the country in your RV. That's right. That's right. No, but I, I'm, that's how I got here today. I got in the RV. The thing's humongous. I got in the back door and got out the front and I was here. <laughs> so the RV never was started and never... Didn't need to. <laughs> Just, it's so long. So long. It, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. So, uh, well, th thank you for coming down here to the Gramercy. Well, thanks I mean, for having me. You know, I mean, uh, uh, obviously the Dakota is on the Upper West Side. That's right. <laughs> right across from the Guggen. Oh, yeah, the Guggenheim. Right. I, I've I've had it up to here with those. You people. don't like the Guggenheim? No, I do not. What's going on at the Guggenheim? They kicked. They took away my pass. You know. 
I had a, a membership. And what I wanted to do, I'd been a member there since the 80s. Since I, that was the first thing I did after I came alive. Really? Right. You came to life and you said, I have to get a membership to the Guggenheim. I, said, I, I, I looked at my white suit and I said, there's a building in this town that is also completely white. I'm going to go into it, become a member of whatever they do there. Was, so, okay. So you wanted to go to a place that matched your suit. Exactly. And I go, you know, so I've been there a member a long time. I give money, everything. I, just recently, last week, I said, you know what I'm finally going to do? I'm going to slide down the... The spiral rotunda. Why not? I've been doing I don't think I need to ask anyone. I'll wait till, you know, regular business. I go up. I've, you know, put an a upside down uh, bathroom mat, you know, on the edge. And I sit on it backwards. And I start to go. For about, you know, an eighth of the rotunda. And I'm stopped short by a big security arm. Pulled off. He said, you can't do that. He ripped up. My bath mat ripped it up, mm -hmm. threw it down the, the rotunda. I watched it all float away, and I, he took. Then he took my uh, car, you know, my membership card. Your membership card. He and and he burned it right in front of me. Why is he ripping up the bath mat and burning <laughs> your card? Just to prove a point. I just think he should be consistent about his manner of disposing these items. You, that's the first complaint I filed against <laughs> Wait, him. that was the first? I didn't have a leg to stand on, you know, because I was using the, the building, which is a piece of art itself, as a, a jungle gym. <laughs> a jungle gymnasium. That's right. Mm. So you've never, you haven't been back there Not since? Not yet. No, it's been a week. I'm going to let, let them cool down. I'm going to cool down. It's been a week? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's the first thing you did in 1984... <laughs> No, it's no, taken no. you 32 years to do this. Yeah, that's right. I haven't been back in a week. I would go every week, and I just haven't gone this week because I'm not allowed in there anymore. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a white sheet on as a ghost walk in, and I'm going to slash every painting they have. <laughs> you don't, uh, don't fuck with me, man. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. The you're not. And Tati, you're not. Now, you guys are cool. Everyone oh, is cool. Oh, thanks. I'm cool? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Wow. That's right. Did you yeah. hear that? I, well, I don't agree. I heard it. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> are you a fan of the Beatles? You... I am now. I really liked everything he said. Yeah? You liked it all? Yeah, but I'd love to hear a little music, you know, to kind of understand the, what kind of music they play. Yeah, I'd love to hear something. I know now you don't do Beatles music anymore. You do these whistling Pete songs. Well, I wish I was doing more of them. Yeah, but I know, you don't have the guitar, the right. guitar with the skeleton whammy bar, skeleton finger whammy bar. Oh, my God. Maybe you could sing a little a cappella, though. Sure, sure, I can Of do one of your new Whistling Pete songs. Uh, uh, one of the new ones. Or one of the old ones, Let's it really doesn't do matter to me. one of the new ones. Okay. I'm really on a hot streak with my writing for Whistling Pete. Okay. You know, uh, this one is, uh, you know, uh, don't sit on a cactus, Whistling Pete. Uh, don't even stand on it, you'll hurt your feet. Uh, avoid all the cactuses all the time and come to my house for a glass of wine. Whoa, I that's love a, that. That's a song. Thank you. I love the Beatles. That's a new Beatles tune. <laughs> Wait, that's a Beatles tune? If I always said if we ever got back together, the remaining members, we'd do all Whistling Pete songs. <laughs> Is it, now, that's your choice, not theirs, I would imagine. Right, and that's why we're not getting back together. They don't want to play that. <laughs> so Paul knows about you? Paul does, yes. He does. And I swore, I swore him the sequence, so you don't tell Yoko. <laughs> Yoko is the one person you don't want to hear about that. Lest I lose my beret. <laughs> Her beret. Yeah, I'd have to give it back. And I'm Mr. not prepared to do something like that. No. Mr. Lennon, uh, what kind of mattress do you sleep on? <laughs> How do you sleep, I think is what... <laughs> Oh, sorry, Todd I'm is, so rude. Todd is trying to say. How do I sleep? You know, you know, the, you know the, your famous song, How Do You Sleep? Mm -hmm. It was, you do know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it. That was an interesting recording, I remember. Because I remember during that recording, I, um, I fell asleep. <laughs> it's a much longer song, but it's... It's pointless to listen to. It's you so know, you, the band just playing over and over. You the, cut the middle eight hours out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you had to. And you know how the song ends. The, the proper song should end, but with me going, what? Oh. 
but it just ends, you know, it fades out or whatever we ended up doing. I don't remember. I haven't listened to that song. Oh, my God. I haven't even thought of that song. In well, years. that was a song you wrote to Paul McCartney. Right, right. Uh, right because you were all upset back. at him. Right. Yeah. And if, if he were to have trouble sleeping, undoubtedly, he would not own a Lisa mattress. No I think way. we would. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, what? by the way, thanks to them for sponsoring this tour. That's so nice of them. It's great. Those are great mattresses. Ten inches of foam. Um, <laughs> foam, foam and fun. <laughs> Ten inches of fun? Is that what you said? That's what I have. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, wait a minute. You told me this wasn't going to be that type of show, Scott. I, no, I, I said, know. fine, I'll come down to the Gramercy. I'll put on a whatever clothing. Because <laughs> when you called, I was, as I explained to you, I was wearing just the sheet. So it's more of a comfort thing than it is... It, it's, yeah, it serves two purposes. Are you nude under the sheet, usually? Mm-hmm. Just as we're all nude under our clothing. Do you cut a hole in the mouth so you can eat? Uh, no, I do it... What I, no, I don't. I, what I do is I put my head up like this and just put food through the eye. <laughs> <laughs> to watch it is disgusting. <laughs> but to do it is delicious. <laughs> All right, John, thank you so much for coming down here. Can you stick around? Oh, yes, I've got all night. Fantastic. Great. Uh, Now, obviously, we're in New York City, and uh, we've been traveling up and down the East Coast, and uh, it's it's been really interesting, I think, that, uh, you know, first of all, Todd, you say you saw a ghost last night and yeah. then uh, you you act like a ghost and isn't that a fanciful thing ghosts well, i mean they can do anything they want can't they <laughs> i don't know well, as we recognize the, them i guess be. there are no laws for ghosts right how would you cuff them <laughs> that's the main problem we could make laws for ghosts sure but you'd be wasting your time and valuable parchment why do, you, why do you keep talking about ghosts? I'm getting scared. It's okay. There's no such thing as ghosts. I, uh. I just... I, did you, did you, I'm sorry. Did you burp or something? No. Uh, I, you know, I had a, a lot of pizza. Uh. But, oh. Robert Durst? <laughs> you had a lot of pizza? Right. But I did not burp. I thought maybe... How much was, is a lot to you? Uh, to me? <laughs> a slice. <laughs> You had one slice of pizza. I hate pizza. Who, who did burp? Did you burp? It must have been you then, I've Todd. I've never burped. Todd, I'm going to spank you if you I burp again. I only fart. You know this. Clanking and only chains. One. Did you hear that? Did someone say clanking chains? What? Oh, my. That's Sp- a scary thought, clanking chains. Ghost, that's web. ghost stuff. Oh boy. Did someone say spider web? I'm scared. Don't be scared, Todd. It, it couldn't possibly be... A black, black cat on a fence. Yipes! That is scary. Oh my gosh. Uh, guys, what is happening right now is this is a ghost who visits me sometimes. It's the ghost of Richard Harrow. Boo. Oh, Un- no. Unfinished business. <laughs> Mr. Harrow, this is quite a harrowing experience, if you don't mind me saying. Boo. <laughs> That's just ghost ju- talk. In the judgmental way. <laughs> <laughs> so you abdicated your ghost duties for one second to review my joke? I took a moment to express my displeasure at that quip. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Harrow, this is uh, my nephew Todd, and this is uh, John Lennon, who uh, used to be dead himself. I never took ghost but shape. <laughs> must be nice. Are you a real ghost? Yes, boo. Uh. Now, Spider r- webs. Uh. Yeah. That proves it. Now, you all would know Richard Harrow uh, from the portrayal of him. He's a real person, but an actor portrayed him on the hit television show Boardwalk Empire. That's what I'm told, yes. (laughs) Except, to the best of my knowledge, the actor did not have half his face blown off in a war. 
As you do, you're wearing half a mask right now. Out of respect for people who don't like seeing an exposed half a face. You sound like uh, you have a cigarette hole in your throat. Well, it might have been some residual damage from when half my face was blown off. But, but also, don't smoke. Don't smoke, guys. Did you smoke back when you were alive? You were alive back Everybody in... smoked. Yeah. The whole world smoked. The earth was just one big smoke ball. It stunk. <laughs> we're just getting back to normal right now, right? What? Because of vaping? <laughs> Finally, wish... the earth is going to smell good. I wish we had vaping when I was alive. I think it would be funny to watch, like, 30s movies with all those gangsters pulling out vape pens. Probably fewer of my comrades would have been shot in World War II because they, not all vape pens light up. I think that's a setting that you can switch on or off. But with cigarettes, it's just, they glow and that's it. Yeah. Why do people turn them on? Because they want something lit up? Like, that's, they think that's the cool part of smoking? For some people, it is. When I was alive, we all used to look at each other's cigarettes and ooh and ah. <laughs> look, it's lit up. We would say, oh, mine is too. This is great. <laughs> Let's sit for a photographic portrait that we'll eventually get to see in 8 to 12 months. So now, uh, uh, you were, I mean, you're a ghost, certainly. Yeah. You have unfinished business down here witch on hat. Earth. Witch hat. Boo. Right. A witch, witch hat. <laughs> he, <laughs> ghosts say scary things to try to frighten us. It's working. I'm s- 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 scared. Uh. Todd, there's no reason to be scared. He's a friendly ghost. You're like Casper, are you? right? Are you going to hurt us? I'm not going to hurt you unless you are a murderer. Mm, I'm not. Nope. <laughs> then you're in the clear. You go around... It's been quite a bit of time since I've seen you, but uh, yes. uh, remind me, you go around murdering murderers? <laughs> I, am, I was a murderer in life, and so when I died, I went to murderer heaven. Why didn't you go to hell? Because there was a murderer heaven available. <laughs> what would you do? Yeah. So you're like Dexter? <laughs> Or Dexter? <laughs> Dexter, I'm familiar with. Who's Dexter? Uh, Dexter is still alive. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, he didn't die at the end of that show. What about in oh, the yeah, books? He was on, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't read the books. <laughs> I love are, the Dexter books. <laughs> are you up there with Han Solo? Spoiler. <laughs> oh. Han Solo, of course, was a murderer. He shot that green guy. <laughs> And he tried to cover it up by changing the movie. Why do they let the characters edit those movies? That's that's unbelievable. It didn't work, though. He's up in Murderer Heaven? That's right. Wow. Who else is up there? Indiana Jones. He murdered a ton of people. He is, he's like a serial killer in those films. He has no compunction about (laughs) shooting people. Just to save time. <laughs> yeah, that guy with the swords, he could have tried to subdue him and, you know, disarm him. The but guy so he... was miles away. <laughs> <laughs> he could have just walked in the other direction. He's a monster, you're right. So what are you trying to do while you're back on Earth? Scott, I don't know if you will recall, but I have seen every motion picture ever made (laughs) except Francis Ha. That's the one movie. And you still haven't gotten around to seeing Francis Ha. I'm just never in the mood to see it. It's it's charming. I've heard it's good. (laughs) It might uplift your spirits. It's such a... I know. I feel like so many times I would see it on the shelf and think why not this? Why... (laughs) I watch this instead of watching something I've watched a million times, and then I think, 
Just can't do it. <laughs> but you do own it. You own it. And it's do. on your shelf. It's in my collection. So recently I rewatched the movie Ghost. Patrick Swayze, Whoopi Goldberg, Demi Moore. Just to see if you relate. I've exact I do watch ghost movies to see how accurate they are. You're like a fact checker. Have you ever done like sexy pottery? I've only done regular pottery. But you doing it, it was kind of sexy. That's very flattering, thank you. In my rewatch of Ghost, I realized I had a desire to teach other ghosts the way the mean ghost on the subway taught Patrick Swayze. And so I came here to New York City to give ghost lessons on the subway. Wow, okay. Interesting. So remind me what the mean ghost did on the subway. He taught Patrick Swayze how to move through solid objects. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one on my shelf that I've kept saying I'm not in the mood for, so I don't really know. You should watch it. There's a lot of good stuff in that movie. <laughs> Will be is pretty funny. <laughs> I love her on The View. <laughs> what is it that you love about Whoopi on The View? Mm, the script's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the characters and the arc every season. She's always mad at a producer in her ear. <laughs> She's got to go to commercial. So urgent. I like how she defends whoever the latest monster is in the news. <laughs> And then three weeks later says, I didn't know, I didn't know. Now I know more about it. It's a fun cycle. Same. So uh, you're, you're here to teach these ghosts, give them ghost tips. Because you've been a ghost for so long. You've been a ghost for now like 80 years? Is that how long Since you've been a ghost? Since the 1920s. 1920s, that's 90 years. My gosh, you've been a ghost for a long time. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Why don't you just decide to be alive like John Lennon here? I wasn't given that option. Maybe there's an expiration date on when you can decide. I think you can still do it any time you want, but you might be getting used to your life now. <laughs> 80 years dead is a long time. Well, let me ask you this. Can you fly around? No. Well, well then can... you should definitely come alive. I can walk from place to place, but I never get tired. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I would that's walk cool. more places if I never got tired, probably. You, you wouldn't walk more places if that's the only way you could travel. Wait, you can't get on a subway and it can carry you, or do you just pass right through it? I can do that, but the subway doesn't go places that I want to go to. Why don't you do what I do and, and stand on a skateboard and hold on to the back of a car? I think that's illegal. There are no ghost laws. We talked about this. Yeah, you can't get arrested. You could do anything you want in the whole world. Things have changed, I guess, since I was a ghost first. A long time ago, I didn't realize that the laws had been lifted. Things were very strict when I first became a ghost. Really? There used to be more ghost laws. You couldn't ha haunt ladies. <laughs> that may have been more a societal thing than an actual law. You had, if, you did, if you did haunt a house with a lady in it, you had to take your hat off for the haunting. Okay, so give us these ghost tips, because I'm really fascinated by this. What are these tips that you're giving the ghosts? A lot of ghosts on the subway are frustrated. <laughs> because they feel their unfinished business is on the subway which is ridiculous. <laughs> well, a lot of them are people who have died on the subway. That's uh, right. And the subways never... used to be far more dangerous back in the 70s. Even farther back than that. <laughs> they were a very dangerous place. Like, if you fell asleep, rats would devour you. <laughs> And that's not just on the subway. That was anywhere in New York City. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's why they call it the city that never sleeps. That's what I thought.
People would take turns, they would be on watch for the rats. That's why people married. You're really full of fascinating facts. FFs? If you like. So... Most people's unfinished business if they died on the subway was getting off the subway. (laughs) So usually they're able to pass on once I point that out. Okay. But it's tough because the stops have changed. So they can't get off on the original one, so they're just doomed to keep going. I tell them, get off one stop later. What's the big deal? (laughs) Then you can haunt a couple blocks on your way to the original stop. I didn't know you could walk and haunt at the same time. Yeah, you don't have to be stationary. Oh, that's news to me. It would be... Hard to haunt if you just had to wait for people to show up to where you were. <laughs> You'd have to find them, stand still, haunt, and then pick up and go and find them again. Yeah. Well, how do you get rid of a ghost if you have someone haunting you? What you have to do is tell them, I mean you no harm. I live in this space now. Please pass on and finish your unfinished business. Oh, okay. Also... Make sure there's fresh batteries in your smoke alarm. <laughs> I, that's what I'm supposed to tell them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> tell every ghost. Make sure there's fresh batteries in your smoke alarm. They will take that on as their unfinished business. <laughs> and they'll go get batteries. Cool. I'll do it when we get back to the hotel. Yeah, uh, you know, Todd just saw a ghost this morning. Or, yeah, or well, last in the night, middle of the night. Yeah. Of the night. You don't say. Yeah, yeah. I do say. <laughs> it was Anybody so scary. I know? Oh, she was an old lady from old times. Go on. She looked chicken like. Chicken squawking. Well, she talked like chicken. She looked like Uncle she Scott. She talked like chicken. <laughs> Not like human. Us be humans. We talk good. One thing I know about chicken. Chicken make lousy house pet. What's that from? <laughs> That's the ghost of an old SNL bit. <laughs> not, not a popular character <laughs> in the Dana Carvey canon. The Carveyverse. <laughs> all I know, all I know is Turtle Turtle. <laughs> Ooh. Going off the menu. (laughs) You know, the ghost of uh, the church lady just came back last week. Well, isn't that special? (laughs) You You realize that was that was her catchphrase too. Huh? (laughs) Are you telling me that that character died? (laughs) One can assume she was so old back in the you know late '80s and early '90s when she came around. Of course, she had to have died. It's reasonable to assume. That the church lady would be dead by now. So this must have been her ghost. What about the Coneheads? <laughs> the Coneheads were the age that they actually were back in the 70s, so it's safe to assume that they're all still living. They're aliens. <laughs> aliens live forever. All aliens? Mm, all the ones I've met. <laughs> Which aliens have you met? What do you mean? Illegal aliens? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about a lot of space stuff. I'm more of a supernatural guy. (laughs) Who's your favorite ghost that you've ever met? Mm, So hard to pick a favorite. Yeah. You got Slimer, a.k.a. Onion Head. Is he around? (laughs) The ghost that he was based on is around. Oh, so he's a fictional ghost based on a real ghost. What did he look like when he was alive? Was he a person who was a blob? Yeah, that's odd. It's like, you know, if, if that ghost can change its shape and form, why do you still have half a face? Why can't you just, you know, transform? Yeah, be a blob. <laughs> I'll take these one at a time. <laughs> I have one coming up after these two. Just it, mentally prepare it's yourself. It's about flying again. I have, I have time for two more. I'll come up with another. Oh, after that, or just two more tops? <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, uh, how many uh, questions can you field? Guys, I'm on a tight schedule. 
I understand. Oh, okay, sorry. Who said that the green ghost from Ghostbusters could change his shape? He never did in the movie. And believe me, I've seen it. He never did in the movie, but one has to assume that he wasn't a blob as a human being. Why does one have to assume that? I've never seen a human being that looks like that, just no legs. Maybe he died before you got a chance to see him. (laughs) I guess. Moving on to the next question. Yeah. Why don't I change my face? Yeah. C, answer to first question. All right, your turn. Yes, this is about flying again. If you ever took an airplane, as a, well, maybe not you because you're not a flying ghost, but a flying ghost, do they have to continue flying as the plane is moving? Because they can't sit in the seats and they'd fall out. <laughs> don't, don't you wonder? Flying ghosts are able to float. They don't have to just fly. So they're not in danger of sitting on a seat, forgetting that they are right. non-corporeal beings right. and falling through. They could just float. They could. In the aisle of the plane. They wouldn't fly out the back of the plane then either. If they wanted to, they could go in that little secret closet for the coats of first class people. <laughs> For a post-flight spook. What? I'm just saying, if they want to do a scare someone post-flight, they could do it then. Do you think clouds the are just ghosts that fell out of a plane? <laughs> that Where? wasn't my second question, but I wish it was. <laughs> Where do you go to school? I have a private teacher who teaches me in a trailer. <laughs> You should know what clouds are by now. Help. (laughs) What about the ghosts uh, Inky, Pinky, Blinky, and Clyde? Have you caught up with them? From Pac-Man? Yep. They're terrifying. (laughs) In real life, they're gigantic. (laughs) Hey, you know, maybe Onion Head, a.k.a. Slimer... I beg of you to stop saying that. (laughs) Maybe he's the ghost of Pac-Man, because he kind of looks like Pac-Man. Ooh. Slimer looks like Pac-Man? Sort of. He's round. He's got a big mouth. He loves to eat. This is all making sense. To you. (laughs) Pac-Man dies at least three times per game. If you're bad at it. (laughs) Burn. (laughs) That was a real burn on you. Every single Pac-Man game in the history of Pac-Man games has had three Pac-Man dying in it. Are Unless you there's challenge? currently one going on right now. <laughs> this could, it could go on forever. You're saying in order for the game to end, Pac-Man must die three times. <laughs> yes. Unless I guess you get to sort of that, uh, such a high number uh, as, you know, seen in The King of Kong, <laughs> where the game just kind of like ends because the numbers can't get any higher. Also, someone could just pull the plug out of the wall. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> What was your question? <laughs> Have you seen those guys around, or the, where, where do they haunt? They haunt various Chuck E. Cheese pizza parlors around the United States. Those places do seem haunted. Oh, I get haunt. scared every time we go. Every time you see that animatronic band, they're filled with dead spirits. <laughs> they're not supposed to come to life and sing a song? No, they're supposed to be statues. You know that... You know that idea of rock and roll heaven with Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain? That's not where those guys went. (laughs) They're inside those Chuck E. Cheese band characters. So you should feel pretty special (laughs) when you go to a Chuck E. Cheese and they start to play. So there's no rock and roll heaven. We've talked about the various No, why would there be? It's ridiculous. (laughs) I guess people just like to imagine the greatest band in history just jamming away. Forever. (laughs) No one likes to do anything forever. Even if it's a thing you like to do. Is that why you left Murderer Heaven? Is it just like murdering people forever? 
Murder heaven is a place where you can go and murder anyone you like. You can murder pets. It's great. Oh, sorry. But do you have to travel to other heavens? Because otherwise you would just be murdering other murderers in murderer heaven. Why, why would that be not desirable? <laughs> well, I mean... That's kind of why it's murderer heaven, because you're only murdering other murderers. So there are pets that are murderers? Every pet is a potential murderer. <laughs> do you know about the lady who had a snake? And the snake would sleep in bed with her, and then he would be coiled up, and then slowly over the course of a week, the snake would uncoil as if it was sleeping next to her, and someone had to explain to this woman that snake is stretching himself out because he's planning on eating you. <laughs> Who explained that to this some woman? A smart person <laughs> who did not have a snake as a pet. Without doing any research about how they eat. <laughs> how did she not know that? I, I mean, I don't expect you to know, I guess. <laughs> I can't speak to the motives of people who want a giant snake in their home. <laughs> when there's so many warm-blooded animals running around that are pleasant to look at and can express affection. I can't get in the mindset of someone who looks at a cold thing and says, that's for me. John, do you have pets? I had a guinea pig. Had. Had. That's right. I used to sleep with him. I rolled over him once. Ooh. And I didn't kill him, but he was gone the next day. So he just took off. He didn't want to be yeah, around I you mean, anymore. He said, this is, I, I knew this was going to happen. I'm, I'm out of here. You know, I don't want to have. I have a question. Yeah, sure, sure. What happened in the time that elapsed between you realizing you rolled over on the guinea pig and the guinea pig leaving? When I, I slept for six more hours. But you realized you'd rolled over on the guinea pig. Right, I, I, I knew it because I had little scratch marks on my stomach when I woke up. And I thought, well, this could only be one thing, the guinea pig that was sleeping with me. You didn't think maybe you were itching in your sleep and you scratched Well, your I own. do that sometimes, but I keep my nails very short. Oh, for that very reason? I, yes, because it's mostly just a rub that I do on myself. Right. How short are those things? Let me take, take a look. Take a look. Oh, my God. You don't have any fingernails at all. Gone completely. That's right. Ugh. That's why we can't get those banjo parts done on the Whistling <laughs> Pete albums. <laughs> I'm stubborn. I'm too stubborn for my own music. Why don't you buy those plastic things you can put on your fingers? I do have a set of those, but they're being borrowed by someone. <laughs> Let me guess. Ringo? Exactamundo. <laughs> what does Ringo need your fake fingernails for? Because he's just, he's fucking with me all the time. <laughs> this, I'm so sad to hear that, you know, Ringo, your best friend, you, there's such a rift in your friendship. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I can do my haircuts somewhere else. <laughs> Well, I hope the next time I see you that, you know, you've mended this fence. Me too. Me too, because you never want to... This is... Uh, to, speaking to you, but I'm really speaking to everyone. You never want to have a great friendship fall apart, because once it's over, you know, you're all, you're all by yourself. And you miss that person very much. Wow. Unless you're a ghost, and then you can just haunt them. That's true. Why don't you turn back into a dead person, become a ghost, and then just haunt Ringo? Well, the way he puts it, I'm already haunting him. Stick, just go away. I'm trying to write this thing. I'm not giving you a guitar. This is interesting to me what? because you think you're still alive. Right. Are you a ghost? Well, am I flying around the room? <laughs> but am, we've am established that, that not all go ghosts. Good point. I didn't even listen to the answer I asked the question. To. You dress up like a ghost. It seems to me like you identify as a ghost. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Scott. What are you talking about? When I got here, I walked through the wall just like everyone else. <laughs> oh, wait what? a minute. This is what? huge. What are you talking about? I walked through the wall. There's nothing wrong with that. I can't believe it's taken us this long. <laughs> taken us this long for what? To, to get me on here at the Gramercy Theater? No. To establish that you're actually a ghost. You're not alive at all. I'm going to need some time with this, Scott. <laughs> 
I don't know. The, uh, yeah, I mean, I can tell why you uh, are still hanging around the Dakota. Uh, it's where I used to be when I was alive. Yeah, you have unfinished business. What do you think your business is? Probably this Whistling Pete album. We're hoping to get it out. We're hoping to get it recorded by the end of the year, and then we're gonna, it's going to go right on iTunes. And then you might go up to heaven. What heaven would uh, John Lennon go to? Please say white suit heaven. Please say white suit heaven. <laughs> I, I think could be there with Steve Martin once he gets up there. <laughs> I'm the king. <laughs> the two denizens of white suit heaven. That's right. <laughs> There's a special heaven just for the Beatles. Beetle heaven. Beetle heaven. Really? And there's only one uh, resident there currently. So, so far. Yeah, George Harrison, your old friend. That's right. What's that going to be like for you to, to hang out in Beetle Heaven for all of eternity? Just four We've people just, in there. Oh, well, you know, we could probably get the old band back together and play some of these <laughs> Whistling Pete songs. I, could, I bet I could wear them down and get them to play all the whole catalog of Whistling Pete. Would Pete Best be in there and Stu Stutcliffe? Uh, and... Yeah, of course they would. <laughs> We're getting a few woos. Why not? <laughs> So anyone who was a member of the Beatle, what about Yoko, who people called the fifth Beatle a lot? Would she be up there? <laughs> no one does Did they? That. No one. Fifth Beatle. No one has ever done that. Also, I'm... it's Sutcliffe. Okay. He's you, been dead so long. What's it matter? Like, you seem like a guy who says Sutcliffe a lot. <laughs> Not that I would know. Maybe any time that I bring him up. Only Other times. than that, no, I'm not. That's fair. <laughs> what about Brian Epstein? Is that a guy? Oh, yes. he'd be there. He'd be there? Sure. What did you say, George Martin? George Martin, he just, maybe he's up there now. He would be up there because he played guitar for me on most of our songs. What? Well, just on Abbey Road, on Abbey Road. I don't want to make a false statement here. You don't want to make a false statement about John Lennon? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I would hate that. <laughs> what about Murray the K? <laughs> of course, he, he helped us out when we came to the U.S., as I recently learned on a podcast I was on. <laughs> he played all our records. He spun them around and put a needle to it. That's what a lot of the DJs weren't doing. They would spin out the records here in the U.S., but they wouldn't put the needle down, and we'd have to go to the record stations and say, what are you, who's running things back there? We'd hit them in the face and tell them to put the needle down. So it would just be dead air up till then. Yeah, and I don't know how some of these record companies or radio play station stayed in business. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yes. Beetle Heaven's getting mighty crowded up there. It sounds yeah. to be like I would rather go to white suit heaven now than we think about it. Yeah. There's no white suit heaven, though. Unfortunately. No, no white suit heaven. What were the types of heavens that were around? I... Yeah, we... I wonder where we're going to go when we die. Oh, I if know. If we ever do. Do you think we'll die? Every uncle and nephew go to the same heaven. No, really? It's called uncle and nephew heaven. No, I don't want to. Can... This is a very important question. Can I spank my nephew in heaven? Please say no. In heaven, nephew spanks you. <laughs> Let's kill ourselves. No, no, no. Please, let's kill ourselves. I want to go there. I find it fascinating you use the Yakov Smirnov joke structure for that. I didn't see any way around it. That was the only way to get the info out. It seemed the most direct. I can't wait to die. What a terrible thing for a young man to say. Uh, How old are you again, Todd? Middle school. Right. <laughs> You didn't even pay attention to me. <laughs> when will you go to high school? Huh? <laughs> when will you go to high school? I don't know. It seems like I've been in middle school for eternity. <laughs> How many years is middle school? It's probably only been about three years or so. Then, so. Um, maybe soon. <laughs> Wait we'll a minute. See. Can I float this out there? Sure. Maybe Todd is stuck in middle school heaven. <gasps> I do love it there. Todd, are you a ghost? Mm-hmm. I have another confession. All right. Step forward, my son. I killed myself before I met you. <laughs> You're a ghost, too? Spiders! <laughs> uh, 
Oh my God, I'm being haunted by three people. <laughs> We're not Which being hat? haunted. We're having a nice conversation. <laughs> you're alive and we're not in heaven right now i mean how would i be able to tell you know you have ghost tips how would i be able to tell if i'm a ghost that should be the first thing that ghosts should be able to figure out well let's see are you stuck wearing the same clothes over and over and over again (laughs) oh my god i think i might be (laughs) how how did i die Do you really want to know? Yes. Yes, spirit. Are are you, by the way, are you past, present, and future ghosts here to teach me a lesson? Yeah. (laughs) Which one are you, Todd? Past, (laughs) doy. Wouldn't wouldn't Harrow be past? No. Or Lennon, either. No, I'm like little you. Okay. (laughs) It made sense in my head. It checks out. (laughs) I'll buy it. How did I die, spirit? How did I die? Please tell me that I was a good man. (laughs) Which do you want to know first? I'll take it in reverse order. All right. Uh, You were okay. (laughs) Could have been better. That's part for the course for human beings, I guess. We all could do a little bit better than we did, like... Maybe I didn't have to murder so many people. I see that now. Sorry. You've learned the error of your ways, but, but before, before you tell me how I died, tell me, is this a future that might be? No, it will be. And has been? Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> how did I die, spirit? He's begging for it. (laughs) I'm finally ready to accept the truth, spirit. Are you? I am. Because you're not going to like it. (laughs) I'm ready for it. You were murdered by someone because you said once too often, this was not that kind of show. (laughs) I'll take it. Wow, this is, I mean, this is a lot to take in. My gosh. Four ghosts. Four ghosts. Nothing wrong with that. (laughs) We should start a band. Ooh. We could call ourselves Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. (laughs) And Ringo. (laughs) Sorry, I was thinking about a drummer friend of mine. (laughs) We know, we know. All right. We know him. He was a Beatle. We know him. Yeah, he should. The way he was, he was the very, Beatle. Yeah, he was very famous. Very good. <laughs> very they good go hand too. in hand a lot of times. Very good and very he famous. He and I go hand in hand all very often <laughs> when we're on each other's good terms. <laughs> when when will he become a ghost? Hmm. Oh, and I pray it doesn't happen very soon after we release this. <laughs> Yeah, let's, maybe I don't want to answer that. I yeah, know, but we, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, let's not talk about that. I look forward to getting all the ghost knowledge that you all know. It's like getting the nuclear codes when you become president. It's not that exciting. What's like the main piece of gossip that I need to know about? About being a ghost? Yeah, or ghost tip, as I'm sure you call it. <laughs> it's a lot of watching people sleep. You're waiting for them to wake up and notice that you're there. (laughs) Some people are sounder sleepers than others, and it makes them difficult to haunt. You try to rattle chains, and you try to say stuff like spider. You do your shtick. (laughs) Earplugs have become very advanced. (laughs) Sort of contoured to the inside of the ear. Exactly. Yeah. But they don't do harm to the eardrum, which is important. Right, I feel like we could talk about this all day. I certainly could. <laughs> well, gosh, who are you guys haunting tonight? I'm going to go find that guy who kicked me out of the Guggenheim. <laughs> and I'm not just going to haunt him, I'm going to slap him in the face. I'm haunting the bouncer at the grammar scene. <laughs> I don't think that's haunting what you're doing to him. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> 
I'm gonna get together with Patrick Swayze and character actor Vincent Schiavelli, <laughs> who played the mean ghost in Ghost, and we're gonna hunt Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> All right, that's our show. Bye, Bang, comedy, bang, 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 bang, comed